Hi, everybody. I'm Andres. I'm Scott. And I'm Abe. And I'm Adam. Uh, this is so Between Two Stands, a, person, uh, a, a, a classical musician's podcast about classical music. And uh, what, do we have, what do we have going on you today? Know, I'm not really sure. I feel like we have an episode that we're supposed to do, but yeah. um, we usually have a guest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't know who... Well, that could be that could be it. So we'll see you guys uh, see you in a month. Okay, I'm going. I'm sure we. Oh, Adam. Yeah. Where'd you come from? <laughs> uh, uh, no, we, today we have Adam Rainey, uh, bass trombone, mm-hmm. uh, n- new new newly appointed bass trombone in Detroit Symphony. We're yeah. so happy to have you. Thank you. Thanks Thank- for having me. Well, so I, you know, just for our uh, our audience might not understand or know the difference between trombone and bass trombone. Most people you, don't. <laughs> oh, okay. so can you can you maybe give us a little bit of explanation on the difference between the two instruments, and maybe also like how you ended up playing bass trombone versus trombone, mm-hmm. or maybe even tuba? If that's uh, I don't know. Well, funny enough, I I'm started I started on clarinet. My mother wanted me to be a double reed. Well, that's player. not similar at all. No, <laughs> she she wanted me to get like scho- like college scholarships and stuff, which is like okay, fair, but uh, oboe player, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but after, but I always wanted to play trombone because m- when my mom was a flute player in high school. She played trombone in marching band, but her band director, mm-hmm. like, chewed her out, like, pretty much saying, like, no, you're playing piccolo. Like, you're just going to wreck your face if you, like, play trombone. So, anyway, as a little wee tyke, as tall as this table, not very tall, I'm not very tall, uh, <laughs> I would just play her old trombone and just play as loud as I could. I think I was, like, two or three. Mm-hmm. But then clarinet happened, and then trombone happened at 11, and I was enjoying it, like, all the slide, it's, like, super fun instrument, I mean, kind of stupid, but it's fun. Uh, but then, it got to the point, like, okay, Adam, your high range sucks. <laughs> 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 your high range sucks, but, and then your instrument is most likely, most likely made in Mexico, so you need an upgrade. Mm-hmm. My teacher's like, you either figure out the tenor playing, or... You go to bass trombone where you probably will do a great job. What grade were you in when that happened? I the talk started my sophomore year in high school. Okay. okay. But it officially happened right in my junior year in high school, and funny enough, it fixed all my like high range problems. Like I could actually play high on bass trombone. It was super fun. But the it's pretty much bass, uh, tenor to bass trombone. Tenor is just like the normal trombone most people play like in high school, and it's in the key B flat. Or, uh, we read and see, but um, but bass trombone the the pipe is a bigger diameter mm-hmm. and there's an extra valve tacked on bigger bell you can play loud it's super fun and yeah and, and there's like an extra when you say extra valve there's a, there's an extra like loop at, in the back too right yeah yeah so there's a yeah extra so like uh, most tenor trombones have one valve with the loop. Yeah, <laughs> the musicologist yeah. on guys yeah. over here. You got an extra one of those. And, 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 and then, I, <laughs> then I got a, a <laughs> second valve with it's another twirly. Really so yeah, it's a super fun. It's kind of heavy, but it's fun. It's good. So for somebody who is like listening to an orchestra or listening to a trombone section, mm-hmm. is there a tonal difference between tenor and bass that they could be like, oh, that's probably bass, based on yeah. like a descript- description? Yeah, if you if you go to a good concert like the DSL, you should go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bass trombone has a just kind of a darker, wider sound. Um, definitely a lot more heft, lower overtones. So we're more of the bridge from tenor trombone to tuba, okay. so a lot of my job is just working with the tuba player, Dennis Dalty, mm-hmm. um, and he's a fantastic player, really enjoy it. So yeah, most of my job is just working. With bridging the, the gap. Yeah, kinda. bridging the gap, and a lot of the low strings, like pretty much just making sure everything's working out. And is there a difference between the mouthpieces of a tenor trombone and a bass, or is it the same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th- there's a big difference. Uh, I remember when I first was slowly switching mouth pieces because like when my teacher knew i was going to play bass trombone, he's like okay i'm going to lend you a mouthpiece mm-hmm. every two weeks and they're going to get bigger mm-hmm. so and i think that was actually quite genius to do because a lot of kids they just jump straight into that toilet bowl of a mouthpiece that mm-hmm. is the bass trombone mouthpiece but slowly got bigger the water's warm <laughs> the water's warm in here <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah there, there's a clear big difference and some mm-hmm. bass trombone players played the 
biggest honking mouthpiece like eat, like I can't do it like mm-hmm. you, you literally feel like you're falling in okay. but um but then there's like a happy medium where I play in but yeah it's a completely different animal and even wow. orchestral orchestral auditions it's completely different repertoire that is asked for us oh interesting yeah. okay yeah. so is this like part of the reason that it seems like it's more of a low brass section because you bridge that gap and it's like I guess another way to ask this is do you find yourself in the trombone section in the tuba section or bridging the gap all the time or one or the other and switching between? I think like... He has an identity crisis. He doesn't know. That's a, that's a sensitive I, question. I, just, I don't know <laughs> who I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting to me, at least as a cellist, that, that there's a different instrument for you as the bass trombonist where yes. it seems as though in other sections like the trumpet and horns, there's not a different instrument but different specialties. Right, in terms of, like, the high register versus low register. I think that just goes back to, like, the 17th century when trombone was actually developed. Okay. Like, they treated it like saxophones, like alto sax, soprano sax, baritone sax. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and for this one, it was all just gauged on how long the trombones were. So this would be an alto trombone, tenor trombone, and then a, a bass sack butt, or bass trombone at that mm-hmm. time, was just a really long trombone that had a rod. Mm, and most okay. of what we did was church, okay. church music. So, like, Mozart's Requiem was most likely played on that, but it's very noodly. And the boar was actually all the same back then. But then with modernization, also you can thank Bartok for that one. Um, mm. Yeah, because Bartok actually made the development of two, uh, a double trigger bass trombone happen. Mm. Because in his uh, Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, the gliss. yeah, the Gliss with low <laughs> Bs. Um, or just playing low Bs in general, like you need two valves to actually make that in tune. So, but to answer your question, yeah, like the, yeah, the history kind of made the bass trombone have to be its own thing because okay. of how composers were composing for it. And and so with with just to get nerdy for a second with mm-hmm. the Bartok example, we weren't we weren't before. I know we weren't before, <laughs> but just to you know, in terms of the Bartok what example, was is he? <laughs> <laughs> so when you say that he helped develop the double trigger, is that something that like he was involved with the design, or he just wrote something that just created a need for he, something new? He wrote something. So odd story. So that gliss that you're mentioning. Mm. Um, it was meant for G bass trombone. Okay. Which is no longer in use. Like, okay. I think it's in G. Pretty sure it's in G. But, uh, like, it was doable then. But then we ran into the issue because back when he composed it, everybody was just playing single trigger bass trombones. Like, the bore was the same size as I'm using now. But, yeah, just single triggers to where, like, my teacher in the Boston Symphony at the time, he rigged up a thing where on the, the tuning slide of the F attachment, he would put a string. He... <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> I, know, I know. Look, I play a brass instrument too. We're always doing something to like yeah. make make it a little bit easier. But like, well, he, yeah, this is great. Well, he put a <laughs> he put a string at at the right at the tuning slide where he could manage to have it go back in. So he would pull it all the way out so he could actually play the B out in seventh, and then his string would be connected to his knee. If you can see my knee, my cute little knee, uh, and then he would bring it up and lower his knee. Wow. To make you look like, like a puppet. You look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, he made it work, and mm. um, but but now we have valves, and funny mm. enough, there, there's actually a Bartok trombone that hopefully the DSO will get rented for the Bartok. Mm. Bartok any any chance there's like a video of your teacher or a picture of your teacher with that contraption? I could find it. Just look up Douglas Yo Bartokless. I bet he has. I bet there's a picture floating around somewhere, okay. or of other people doing it. A lot of people have done the same trick, okay. but you kind of mess. Like you literally have to put like valve grease on your uh, on the inner sleeves, which is usually like a really mm-hmm. thick grease to keep it in place. But then it like it will literally move up and down. It's I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. <laughs> for, for those of you trying it, at yeah, home. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna zoom out here for just a quick second. We're, <laughs> we're like you. getting really, uh, but uh, <laughs> so, so so you you came from Kansas City. You were playing with. With Kansas City Symphony, yes, I was for, a, for how, how many? Years? Was I was there years? for eight, eight years. years. Okay, yeah, and um, and then you, you've been here for for is this your second? This year? This is my second season. So, like, how would you describe the change that that you've had to um, deal with? Not not necessarily city yeah. oriented, but like you know, I, I know each section has its own unique style mm-hmm. way of playing. 
what were, were some of the adjustments you've had to make? Well, I gotta say, like, my eight years in Kansas City, I really learned a lot, but I was also, like, going back to Boston, taking lessons, like, taking auditions and stuff. Like, Kansas City holds a special place in my heart, because I learned so much. And so that, like, that orchestra has a very modern hall, if you're, for those listening, just type in Hellsburg Hall, Kansas City, and you'll see what I mean. It's based off of Disney Hall in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the same architect. Oh, Frank so, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, <laughs> the hall is very touchy to where I remember Chicago Symphony came and played in our hall, and I was at the top seats, and I could hear the clarinet keys. Like, wow. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> so, so the acoustical design's the same, too? It's a, like, it's well, Casey's Hall, I think, is more touchy, but we okay. did play a fair bit louder. Probably my fault. I like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a bass trombone player. Like a, yeah. like a proud bass trombone player. Um, <laughs> so, from, so to answer your question, going from Kansas City to Detroit, I think, um, I wouldn't say it's a more mature sound, but it's definitely a more... Because your you're all's hall, you don't have to try that hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, I really don't have to keep going for it all the time. So, and I don't know, does it just being around uh, just different musicians, everybody phrases things differently, mm-hmm. or like, oh, yeah, we're going to taper this note instead of just cutting it off really quickly. So it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's different. I'm sure, yeah, yeah it, anywhere you go, you're going to find, yeah. that's what I find when I play with different groups. It's like, it's not necessarily better or worse, it's just like, oh, we're doing things a little differently. You yeah. got to keep your ears sharp, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but so wait, have you played in in New World or or LA before? Have you played in those halls? Because no, those are the same uh, same um, same uh, uh, architect. Well, my sister Jacqueline, you we went yeah. to school together, but uh, yeah, my sister Jacqueline, she used to be the horn uh, player. Yeah, horn French yeah. horn player. She used to great, be great, great French horn player. Yeah, <laughs> she used to be uh, associate like principal uh, French horn in the LA Philharmonic. So oh. every time my family and I would visit, we would go to Disney Hall and yeah. see all the concerts mm-hmm. and. Yeah, they, they. So I got to ha- see a lot. And funny enough, Disney's Hall, the sound gets sucked upward. I, I was gonna say that there, uh, playing on there, it, you know, here you you kind of hear w- what you sound like. Yeah. There, your sound just kind of like it goes out immediately, yeah, it and escapes. and it's it's hard. You know, it's just an adjustment. You're just like, what am I playing too loud? Am I playing too soft? So it's it's. It's just interesting to compare those two places. Um, yeah, and like it, it, kind of polar opposites. And funny enough, with Kansas City's Hall, which is smaller but based off the same design, uh, it is you're very naked. Like if you're like for me, like Schumann Three, the Fourth Movement has a very touchy trombone corral. Mm-hmm. So if I'm just like starting to play and I hear two people whispering out in the hall, it sounds like two ants are sitting right here <laughs> having a con- and it's like. It's yeah. very, it's very touchy and like here it's just I would agree. The only thing you hear here is when someone drops a plastic cup. That's, yeah. like, that's the only thing that takes <laughs> you out of here. Yeah. In the takes, most yeah. in the most intimate part of yeah. any piece, yeah. we have to drop that wine bottle. Yeah, <laughs> I always take it as a compliment. It's like they they they're holding it. And then they're on the edge of their seat, and then forget they're holding. Something. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh no! Yeah. It's like, exactly. Settle down. <laughs> settle down. Glad, Anna. You're, glad you're doing that positively. Scott. I, I, I have to. to. That's how I picture it too. Just like. Wow, this is great. What? As, as opposed to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always seems to drop like several stories too. Like, it just, it, it's never just like a, a a short drop. Anyway, no. Um, so yeah, speaking of Jacqueline, so so you, did you did you guys um, play a lot growing up together? Did you guys collaborate? Hmm. <laughs> uh, well. Uh, or did you guys hate each other? Like no, 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 no. <laughs> I love my big sister. Yeah, I know you guys but, get along. Yeah, yeah but uh, there was definitely, I remember in high school, uh, uh, like mom mom was pushing for that too. It was like, oh, why don't you all play a duet together? And we did once, like, okay, we're done. Like, we're not doing this. <laughs> but, uh, but like, we did do, we did do like Oldham County Community Band in LaGrange, Kentucky. We yeah, do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, we kind of did our own thing. I mean, back then, I did not want to be a musician. What did I you want, want to be? I wanted to be a doctor so I could make money and and then <laughs> probably when people. I, I, the, it's just going to really sound terrible because she's doing better than me. I figured that Jacqueline was going to be a poor musician her whole life and I would have to support her. <laughs> oh, man. Brother Jack of the Year Jacqueline, I hope you're watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to send this right to her. But no, if I, I mean, but we're... 
<laughs> more successful. She's definitely more successful than me. So it's just she's like, doing great. Yeah, she's, she's doing, doing really fantastic. Great. She's going to be. I'm. I need to be supported by her. Uh, <laughs> Send money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please I have a Patreon. Uh, <laughs> um. But now, like, like we do work together, and she's actually uh, she will be uh, playing Chike Six with us. Oh, cool. And she will also be doing our Florida tour. So that oh, amazing. Right. Fun. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Having her in the section. Yeah, but we also went. I mean, we went. Same with you. We went to New England Conservatory mm-hmm. together, and we played many orchestra concerts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it was really fun. And yeah. well, uh, when you, yeah, I mean, some people uh, on paper it sounds great, like oh, play a concert together. But that requires uh, behind the scenes a lot of like talking things out and communication. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure like you guys, your siblings, you could piss each other off. Oh so yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> you yeah. Know, like the rehearsing <laughs> part, probably the playing part is probably the easy part. You don't have to talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember at the beginning of COVID when everything was locked down and terrible, like we both drove down to Atlanta to hang out with some people. I think this is when the numbers are getting lower, so we're allowed to do it. Um, well, we got roped into doing uh, the Pulak Trio for, <laughs> for like, oh, we, no. we we got paid to do Why it. Why is that bad? I know, it was good, just, it was fine. It's a great, pe- like, it's probably the only good trio that I, I know of. I got a beef with uh. it. Like, I don't... Uh. I do have a little bit of a beef. Yeah. I don't like playing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely the best trio that I think I've ever like. It, uh-huh. That's the most musically rewarding one, yeah. but I don't think that that's a very good. It's a little bar. <laughs> that's fair. Well, like we got roped into doing, we got paid. We just had to record it, but yeah, it was it was me playing the the tenor trombone part, mm-hmm. bass trombone, so it was a little hefty. Uh, and then Jacqueline, and then our friend uh, Stuart Stevenson, who's now a principal oh. trumpet in Dallas. Dallas, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. But yeah, like we collaborated, it was fine. But like we ran through it twice. We're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's just kind of the rainy, the rainy family. Like we're very like, like we're gonna play it, we're gonna do it right. Like the first two times, and like, okay, no fluffing yeah. around, we're done. So, um, um, oh sorry, you said you like. At, when did this switch from doctor to musician happen? Where you're just like, oh, doctor, that's that, that's a lot of school. I don't want to do that. Well, it <laughs> coincides with me switching to bass trombone. Oh, really? So yeah. my mother is like, well, you need a bass trombone teacher. It's like, okay, okay, money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we found a bass trombone. Well, it, it was the bass, the retired, now retired bass trombonist at the Cincinnati Symphony, Pete mm-hmm. Norton. Um, and I owe a lot to him. He really got me into it, but we started taking lessons and I remember the first lesson, I wasn't really that confident of a player. So we opened up the Arbenz book, which is like the brass Bible of like articulations, technique, all that stuff. So we get to the double tonguing session. I'm like, Ugh, cause I did not practice multiple tonguing at all. And I just remember in a lesson, he just, he said, all right, play this. And it was, uh, it was double tonguing, but it was all different. It, it was all just going up at a scale, and I yeah. was like, "Oh no!" Because like you have to, you have to coordinate with your slide or valves or not be lazy oh, like my me. Goodness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> get into this. So double tonguing, <laughs> for our normal audience, for people who do not know what the hell we're talking about. Yes. Um, what you do, like tonguing on a on a brass instrument or anyone an instrument, is like saying uh, the the consonant T. T T T T T T T T like that sort of thing over and over again, mm-hmm. and double tonguing. You also use the back of your tongue to ha- add like a K syllable, so or like, a ga, or a G syllable, or yeah. a Q, or but so it'd be like taka 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 taka. Q. Do you do Q? I have a book. Oh my goodness. Sorry, we got where get it, it says we uh, have yeah, to get it back where to it's this. like uh, two. <laughs> it 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 actually spells it out above the note to do Q on like the second one. I, don't ask me. I didn't write it, but that's I've seen it. What book are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know? Do you really want to know? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, th- so it's an extended it's technique weird. to help you play really fast notes uh, and really quick articulations yeah. Yeah. Um, on a brass instrument, and it's difficult. Yeah, it's, diff- it's difficult when you're a high schooler like me that never practiced it. Or yeah. So anyway, I remember uh, Pete was just like, "We'll just do it." I'm like, oh, "Okay." And I did it, and and my mother was sitting in the lesson because it was like the first lesson. She drove. We drove like an hour and a half to get here, and then we're going to go back. And she's like, "Oh my god, he did it!" Uh, like I actually did. It was very surprising. And then I started enjoying it. And then I started sounding better than a few adults that I would play around. And then I broke my dad's heart when I was like, "I'm going to audition for music school." 
that's what every parent wants, <laughs> so yeah. wants to hear. <laughs> I'm just curious, what kind of doctor were you interested in becoming? I don't know any doctor that made yeah. money. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I know. Uh, but like thinking about it now, I probably would have been happier being like an accountant mm. or like I don't know. I enjoyed numbers back then. Not many people say those words. <laughs> uh, but uh, my mom was a CPA. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, mine too. That's. I don't know if she liked a bunch, but. Um, <laughs> So so before we go on to this this uh, this quiz that we have, um, what what do you like like to do when when you're not in the music uh, mindset? How do you kind of spend your free time? Well, I have a side business, buying and selling used trombones. It's fun. Oh. I, I I wanted. Do you the, refurbish them? Yeah, I get them refurbished. I wanted oh. to supply a service. Or I think, well, originally it was just me buying vintage stuff okay. and, and getting it refurbished, making profit. But now it's turned into, I'm going to buy this professional quality instrument that has seen better days, give it a new life, and and let high schoolers play on them. And mm-hmm. Well, they, they buy them, but like it, pretty much I just make sure that it works fine. And I don't know. It's a good. It's a good side hustle, but also it like it keeps me like mentally kind of productive. But mm-hmm. besides that, I love playing disc golf. Mm. Um, in Kansas City, I got really into it. Okay. Tons of courses there. Um, I need to. Get, I need to. The issue in Detroit is it gets cold, and disc golf is outside. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ah! yeah. So like my drives are my drives are not as long as it used to be, and my putting is very iffy but also i love riding saddlebred horses i take riding lessons weekly so wow, here too no i well i drive like north up to davison oh wow yeah so that's like, cool yeah i drive or i ride horses um it's a great workout i got a new uh i found a new teacher that was recommended to me and awesome she's kicking did you do that as a butt. kid too i did yeah my my family my my sister actually rode um professionally Wow. Well, like in high school, like we had a we had a three gated pony, not like this pony, but like a real pony, like really like sixteen and a half hands. Wow. High. Um. So yeah, she she would actually do it, and I did it for a bit. I felt I. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's a the terminology. Hands. A hands. Yeah. yeah. A lot of hands. Um. <laughs> so, but yeah, like I, I don't know. I just love riding horses. But yeah, if people listening just just type in saddlebred horses, you'll have an idea what I'm talking about. It's more of a Kentucky breed thing because I'm from Kentucky. Um, so yeah, it's great workout, and I just get my butt kicked, and it's great. And yeah, it, it it's fascinating what you learn when you're on top of a horse. Nice. Like don't fall off. Yeah. <laughs> Two yeah. questions. Yes. One about the trombone business. Uh-huh. It, it, like for the thing that every trombone player knows that most people wouldn't if they saw like if they walked into a an antique store and there was a trombone in a case. Yeah. Like I think you would know is this like you might be looking for give mm-hmm. us one specific thing that you might look for that's be like, oh, that's something that you would be interested in. I pretty much the engraving on the bell, like what is the brand? Yeah. Like, okay. If it that's if like it, a, a, a base. That's the baseline. Yeah. <laughs> like I think my dad tried to help me a little bit. He's like, oh, I got this for you, and it was like <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're like, why did you do that? Yeah, why yeah. did you? <laughs> Were you drinking again? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that was That's for another uh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's a therapy episode. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so the brand, um, like most of what I do, like just real American companies like Khan, Bach, King, mm-hmm. sometimes Benj, I don't know, just anything. But a lot of it was a, was a ton of research on my part, just like constantly looking up on facebook and just researching models and see what people want to buy and mm-hmm. actually what resells well so okay. it was it, there's a lot of brands but mostly i just gravitate towards the the well reputable ones okay. because those are all, those are really the only ones that will return a profit so very cool yeah i was going to ask you something else but i forget what it was it's fine <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, yeah. Move on to so, a game. so because uh, we wanted to spare Abe on losing again, um, yeah. Abe is a part of this this uh, this quiz that we that we came up with, awesome. and and I feel like we've we've exhausted the classical composers, so we decided to actually move on to, it's close, but movie score, oh, okay. composers, okay, and uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you're up against uh, uh, someone who's who's pretty good at trivia. <laughs> I'm not good at anything but the trivia that I make up. Is there a prize? <laughs> is there a prize? 
I should be. I mean, you get to brag. Yeah, you get to brag <laughs> on stage about it. You know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I've about. never, I've never done it before, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, I've never been able yeah. to brag. <laughs> if I win, I'm going to serve my dominance on stage. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> you don't already. <laughs> oh, I have That's to say, true. this is kind of nice, having like having our first in person guest. Yeah, you're the first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. Also, once again, bottom of the barrel, it only gets better from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also having a guest play a game, like man, we're yeah. breaking new strides. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's multiple choice. Who are we starting with? Um, how about this? I'll start with you. If you don't get it right, he gets a chance to. Oh, I like okay. that. Get it. All right. Cool. <laughs> Who is known as the father of film music? Eric Korngold, Max Steiner, Bernard Herrmann, Ennio Marconi. Ooh. Oh God, I'm going Korngold. Okay, Korngold. But can I not pick it? Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. I was wrong. 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 So, so, so. <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> so oh, that was wrong. That so oh. don't pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what were the others? <clears throat> Max Steiner, Bernard Herrmann, Ennio Marconi. Marconi? No. Mm. Max Steiner. We're both stupid. That's the yeah. one that I didn't know. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the other three names. Who's that guy? He's famous. Okay. I don't uh, like that uh, question. So he's he the did, father of. Uh, yeah, he's a father. Uh, so he did King Kong. He's not right. And he that was, was the, the first, first, <laughs> first one that he like oh. made the music that was timed with the action of the movie. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> hey, how do you know that? Little, what little <laughs> research we, we learned a lot. <laughs> a lot yeah. Okay. In the 15 minutes that you were waiting for us to start, we learned a lot. He did not know anything before this. <laughs> I never do. I, never do. I don't okay. appreciate this audience. <laughs> All right. So so far zero 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 zero. zero. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So then. Okay. So okay. Me. So the last samurai was the 100th score for this film composer, oh. Alan Silvestri, Alan Menken. Hans Zimmer or Danny Elfman? Definitely not Danny. I don't know about... Wait, Last Samurai? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, say the first three again. Alan Silvestri? Uh-huh. Alan Menken? It's not Menken. Hans Zimmer? I would say Hans Zimmer. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Alan Silvestri. I'm glad that I didn't have a chance to address <laughs> <that stuff. laughs> Okay. Adam, up one. For some reason, I think you're going to know this one. Which of these composers had a band named Oingo Boingo? Michael Giacchino, <laughs> Randy Newman, Danny Elfman, Howard Shore. Oh. I mean, I guess you know it. I'm going Randy Newman. No. Danny Elfman. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yeah. Wow, I would have thought you knew that. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> Wasn't he a rock star singer? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he, got, yeah. he got roped into singing the role for Jack Skellington. That's Danny Elfman singing Jack Skellington. That is and not the actor. In, wow. Yeah, he got roped into doing it because the Y'all main voice actor couldn't. I, I could <laughs> exactly. be wrong. You could photo or you could it bomb this check, with we'll comments. I think that's true. Yeah, I think I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, that's Danny Elfman singing. Uh, Natalie, Natalie did that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. getting some nods. Boingo, boingo. What's? Because I know I've. I've There's one famous it? song. I, I I can't think of it right now, but but okay, uh, we'll we'll play it. Lots of drugs involved in that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we even need to ask one. the last question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. That's embarrassing. So do- <laughs> All right, we can do a double, double or nothing. So like, if you. Oh, want oh, yeah. Ooh. Or a quad or nothing. I don't know. How how bad am I beating you? You you got. Two zero. You've got. Yeah, it's two, two to zero. zero. Mm. Yeah. Like Do you want to risk it? That's like double jeopardy. Yeah, I'll jeopardy. risk it. I'll risk okay, it. Double jeopardy. Make right. it interesting. So this could be four to zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really sad. Okay. So which movie did Bernard Herrmann not compose? Mm. Citizen Kane, Psycho, Gone with the Wind, Taxi Driver. Is it me first? Or is it Scott first? Oh, uh, yeah, it's you. It's you, yeah. yeah. Scott went first last time, yeah. Gone with the Wind. Man, you got Henry smoked. Mancini. Is it Gone with the Wind? <laughs> <laughs> nice. To be honest, wow. I'm really glad I was not a part of that. <laughs> so this is my trophy. Yeah, it's a yeah. trophy. I would probably got that one wrong too. And honor. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a trophy for next time. Yeah. Just like, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey man, the trophy thank you I so much for joining us. Of it course, was, it was awesome. <laughs> awesome to chat with you. Yeah, I learned more than I wanted to about trombone. To yeah. be honest, me too. Um, and sackbutts. Yeah. And sackbutts. And yeah. 
It's also nice because we're playing a lot of movies this month. Yeah, yeah. So that's true. Like Harry Potter. Wait, this month? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elf yeah. and Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. And yeah, and then Harry Potter's next and there are more month, or, uh, yeah. coming up in the season. Yeah. See, I go a week by week basis, so I don't <laughs> even know anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, take our word for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. See you guys next time. Right. Bye. Bye.